Honestly, I have a love-hate relationship with grass. I seem to spend a lot of my time getting rid of it in one place while hoping to make it grow in another. But seriously, it's mostly because of this, because it leads to that. No, no, my horses are not a fan of it either. Do you like going to the dentist? But why do horses need to see the dentist? To understand the root of the problem, we need to go back way back. You see, the great evolution arm race between vegetation and herbivore started way back in the Cretaceous with the dinosaurs. And as a result, grass has evolved two very interesting defenses. Have you ever wondered how trees and shrub grow? Well, it turns out that they grow from the tip. They grow some new wood, what we call new wood, a little bit every year. But grass is different. It doesn't grow from the tip. It grows from the base. If I cut it, it just keeps on growing. And so I have to keep mowing the grass. This, of course, I am sure you realize now, allows for grass to survive the grazing process. It also makes for a constant source of nourishment for herbivores during the growing season, and is therefore able to sustain some of the largest animal mass on Earth. But plants need to also make seed to propagate, and if herbivores keep cutting them down before they make it, they won't be able to reproduce. So over time, some believes due to the grazing pressure, although some research recently has cast some doubt on that particular hypothesis, but the idea was that plants started to include some silica as a grazing deterrent. They metabolize these little spicules, it's not the right word, but you get the idea, spiky little things, into the structure of their stem and their seed body and in the leaves too. Those little slivers are made of pure silica, opal actually. When they tested some sheep on various types of grass. They found that the sheep, at least, preferred the grass with lower level of silica. You see, silica is not used by the metabolism of mammals, so it's pretty much evacuated as waste. But weight for weight, it does replace some more nutritious element of the plant. So it's not a surprise that grazers would evolve a preference for less silica-rich fodder. On average, grasses contain 2 to 3 percent of silica. So an average horse eating 50 to 70 pounds of grass in a day would ingest between 1 and 2 kilogram of that silica, just from the grass alone. And of course, there's other source of sand in their diet. And as we know, sand is, well, abrasive. In the Paleolithic and Neolithic, and all the way to even relatively recent human history, we've been grinding grains down by using stone surfaces. The oldest of these are called saddle corns, and you can see one here. Grinding, of course, releases the digestible flour from the shell of the seed. And cereal agriculture was a turning point for human shift from a mostly protein diet to one that could be supplemented with carbohydrate, such as those fla that flour that we grounded out. But the grinding incorporates bits and pieces of stone in the flour, and that abrades our teeth, and it shows up in the teeth that the archaeologists are uncovering. As you know, your adult teeth, or your adult tooth, is the end product. If you damage them as an adult, there is no repair possible without access to modern dentistry, of course. We did not evolve to eat a very abrasive food, but herbivores have. They mostly graze and naturally ingest other sorts of grit as they eat really close to the ground. So their teeth would be completely worn down in a few years if it wasn't for a clever, if not inevitable, adaptation that appeared in mammals roughly 25 million years ago. Do you know that the dentition of mammals is what sets them apart morphologically from other animals? Back in school, I learned that mammals were distinctive because they had fur and they made milk. How could we determine that this tiny piece of jaw from one of the earliest mammals ever found in North America was in fact a mammal? What gave it away? It wasn't the fur or the mammary gland, that's for sure. Well, it turns out that another characteristic of mammal is the fact that they evolved different specialized teeth. For example, dinosaur had one kind of teeth in their mouth. That's what makes distinguishing their diet relatively straightforward. Meat or grass. But mammals are different. We are different. We have different kind of teeth in our mouth. We have incisor, canine, and molars. And each of them can be specialized for its function 
and our particular diet. In the case of herbivore, this evolution has gone further with the apparition of what we call hypsodonty, which simply means that the teeth are formed with a very long crown that continuously erupt or pushes out of the gum. We human, we grow our teeth once as an adult, and we only have enamel on the top of it. But herbivores like cows and horses have enamel almost all the way down their teeth, almost all the way down to the root. That way, despite grinding their teeth down with the silica that's in plant, in the grit that they pick up as they graze, horses can keep their teeth until they're, well, long in the tooth. Generally, horses run out of teeth between the age of 30 and 35. Foals are born with teeth, baby teeth, just like us, and they erupt out of the gum in the first few months. And then they lose those baby teeth in a sequence in between the age of two and five years old. These baby molars that we call caps are thin and they have shallow root, as you can see here, and they are worn down by a few years of eating grass. I don't have an adult tooth to show you, but they're about yay long, and they will need to last the horse its entire life. In the wild, that is rarely much longer than 15 or 16 years, on top of the five years spent, of course, with the baby molars. But in domesticated setting, it can be much longer. It's common to have to feed geriatric horses that have lost most of their teeth. Soaking chopped hay cube is then the way to go to keep them fed until eventually they grow too old to even digest that and, well, the end comes. So that brings us to the dentist part. Because horses' teeth erupt all the time, at about two to three millimeter every year, if they're not kept ground down regularly and evenly, then we can get into some trouble. And of course, there's a lot of reason why horses don't green ground their teeth perfectly. For one, just like us, I, we're all not all born with a perfect smile, while well, the same thing goes for horses. So for that reason, some of them need more help here and there during their life. Horses need to be able to move their mouth up and down and sideways. The sideways part is essential for moving the grass that they clip or rip backwards toward the grinding plane of that long row of molars that they have. The food moves in a spiral, actually, getting grinded with every chew. Then it gets heavily coated with saliva, and then swallowed. Most of the time when they show you a skull, they show you this side view. What they don't show you is the cross section. So we'll do that across the back of the molar. So what we have, of course, here is the top of the mouth and the bottom of the mouth with the tongue at the bottom, of course. And now we need the gums in which the teeth are uh, seated, obviously. So these are the gums that I'm drawing here. And of course, all around it, what we have is the flesh, the skin, the muscles that are all around. So that's what's around it. So the thing to remember about the horse's teeth is that they are not flat, right? So I'm exaggerating the angle a little bit here, but just a bit. The point is that they are slanted. And we can see that in this picture here. So here they are slanted. And what happens then, because they're slanted, is that when the horse eats the grass and pushes it to the back of the mouth, it will spiral its way to the back of the mouth. It'll get worked between the teeth and outside, but the cheeks are going to push them back in. And so you have this spiraling action that progressively moved the bolus of grass, the bolus of food, toward the back of the mouth. If the incisors are too long, a common issue in horses that don't need to clip or rip grass for a living, for example, those living on hay for most or part of the year, like my pony here, that because of metabolic reason cannot be left out to graze. So, if those front teeth are not worn down by the same amount as the molar, then the leverage that they create prevent the back teeth from closing all the way and the chewing performance is greatly reduced. If the angle of the teeth are not quite right for one reason or the other, then the teeth wear will be uneven and it could lead to sharp edges that can cut on the inside of the cheek. The list of reasons your horse's dentition should be looked at regularly is quite long. But the point is that this would not be a problem if those teeth were not continuously erupting. And horses might not have those kind of teeth have they not had to deal with the grit and the abrasive grass. So yeah, when it comes to grass, it really is a love and hate thing. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.